Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking a look at the impact addressing the Spectra Variant 4 floor has on Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs. Now, back when the Meltdown and Spectra vulnerabilities were first made public earlier this year, we knew this was going to be an ongoing process. The initial patches didn't address everything. They addressed Variant 1 known as Meltdown and then two Spectra floors known as Variant 2 and Variant 3. Recently though, Intel and Microsoft rolled out updates to address Variant 4, a related speculative execution attack dubbed Speculative Store Bypass. Speculative Store Bypass affects not just Intel, but also AMD and ARM processors. That said, the AMD and ARM processors can be addressed much more easily via a simple software update. So if you keep your operating system and web browser up to date, you'll be protected against Variant 4 automatically. If you've got an Intel processor, fully mitigating the issue requires not just the software updates, but also a firmware update. So in other words, a BIOS update. Intel started shipping microcode patches for Variant 4 to its hardware partners in beta form just a few months ago now, and we're only just starting to see board partners pushing them out. In fact, to my knowledge, ASUS is the only board partner to do so thus far. However, while the latest round of BIOS updates from ASUS does include the updated microcode for Variant 4, it's not enabled in Windows by default. For now, it has to be manually enabled by adding a few registry keys. It's likely at some point this will be done automatically, and I suspect Microsoft is worried about a repeat of the disaster they encountered earlier in the year when addressing the first wave of vulnerabilities. So this time around, they've taken a more cautious approach. Intel has said enabling the fix will lead to approximately a 2-8% to decrease in performance, and this was observed when benchmarking with Sysmark 2014 on client and server test systems. But I'm sure what many of you want to know is what kind of performance impact this will have on your system, particularly for games. Now, for AMD users, there should be no impact at all, but I will look into this in another video soon. For now, we're going to see what kind of impact this has on those using a Coffee Lake CPU. And please note, for now, we can't test older systems as the BIOS updates don't exist yet. So for this test, I'm using the Core i7-8700, the non-K version, on the ASUS ROG Strix Z370F gaming motherboard using BIOS version 1002. I'll be comparing results with SSB enabled and disabled, and the enabled results will be labeled as pre-update and the disabled as Spectra V4 update. So with that, let's get to the results. First up, we have the Cinebench R15 results, and here we see no changes at all with the Variant 4 patch enabled. The single thread score goes unchanged, and the same is true for the multi-threaded score as well. Three points is well within the margin of error here. The CPU Z benchmark, here we saw a 3% decrease for the single thread test, but just a 1% decrease for the multi-threaded test, and those results were repeatable over and over again. The Corona benchmark was run half a dozen times for each configuration, and we found that the variant four mitigations impacted performance by just a single percent. Not a lot, but we did consistently see a 1% reduction in performance. Here we see no change in performance when testing with 7-zip, less than 1% difference between the two test configurations. Now, moving on to some gaming, and we find that little has changed when benchmarking with Battlefield 1. The 1% low result was consistently lower with the Variant 4 update enabled. That said, we're only talking about a 2% drop-off in performance. Far Cry 5 only saw a 1.5% drop-off for the average frame rate, with a 1% change for the minimum. And although the Variant 4 update did make the Core i7-8700 consistently slower by 1-2 FPS, it's not exactly a big performance hit. We again only see a 1 to 2 FPS hit when testing with Rainbow Six Siege, so not much else to say there. And then finally, I took a look at Fortnite, and here we do see a slightly larger 3% drop off for the average frame rate as well as the frame time performance. Again, not a big change, but we were consistently seeing a 4 to 5 FPS drop in performance. So, Intel claimed a 2 to 8% performance hit when addressing the Variant 4 vulnerability by disabling Speculative Store Bypass. But in our tests, it looks more like just 1% to 3%. The impact for Linux users appears to be more in line with Intel's own claim, and we believe that comes down to the Windows scheduler, which is less efficient than the Linux scheduler. Previously, we found when patching variant 1, 2, and 3, this reduced the gaming performance of the Core i7-8700K by up to 5%, though for the most part, we only saw a 0% to 3% decrease in frame rate. Variant 4 has seen a further 1% to 3% dip in performance, though this time we were testing with the non-K8700, but the margin should be much the same across the entire range. 
What this all means is since December last year, the gaming performance of Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs is down by one to 6%. For the most part, we're likely only talking one to two FPS in games pushing over 60 FPS and up to five FPS for high refresh rate gaming. Again, not a big deal overall, but it's worth keeping in mind that Intel will suffer an IPC hit because of this with future architectures that address these vulnerabilities at a hardware level. For now though, those of you who own an eighth generation Intel Core processor needn't worry about your games turning into a slideshow. The performance impact isn't that significant. That said, even if it was, we would strongly recommend you update your BIOS and enable the mitigations as soon as possible because remember, just like Daniel Ricardo, hackers like him vulnerable. And that is going to do it for this one for now. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do at Harbour Unboxed, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.